certain universal truths about human nature. We respect most what we work the hardest for, and it's through our own failure that we gain a greater appreciation of success. I used to fear walking away from a photography trip empty-handed, but I don't worry about that anymore. I've learned that there's opportunity everywhere. It's only when we become blind to the beauty around us that we lose the ability to find great subjects and take meaningful photographs. The last time I came up dry on a photography trip was in 2011. The weather was perfect and I spent over a week in the field in some absolutely beautiful locations and I couldn't find just the right subject. Looking back at that trip, I now realize how many opportunities I ignored because I was so fixated on chasing a scene that didn't exist. I learned an important lesson on that trip and I've since placed more emphasis on being a better witness to the world around me. We learn from our own mistakes and it's through those same mistakes that we become better photographers. One could argue that we learn more from a single failure than from a mountain of success. My approach with these video journals is to document the entire process, much like a written journal. You'll see every photo I shoot, the good, the bad, and the mediocre. I think it's important to show the entire process. It's a great learning experience, both for me and for those that watch these videos. Sharing all of my work gives a more realistic view of the process as a whole, and perhaps it makes those portfolio shots even a bit more special. Although this is my first solo photography trip to the Redwoods, it'll be my third overall trip in recent years. The first two trips were summer camping trips with my wife to gain some insight about the area. One of my goals leading into this trip is to set aside some time to soak in the scenery and to truly enjoy the process of getting to know a new location. It's been an unusually wet spring across the western US, and a weather forecast shows nearly constant rain for the duration of my stay. This will almost certainly present some challenges, but I'm looking forward to that. This is a story of my spring of 2019 trip to the magnificent coastal redwoods of Northern California, a ruggedly beautiful landscape that's home to the tallest trees in the world. After 14 and a half hours on the road, finally made it to the destination here, which is the Redwoods. And this is gonna be a very challenging trip because it is a completely new location for me in terms of photographically. I mean, I've been here before. Actually, I was here this past August with my wife. And then a few years before that, we also came up here, but to kind of to a, a different area. And on those trips, kind of took some time getting to know the area, hike some trails and have some foundation as far as some things I kind of want to see and, and shoot and all that. And, uh, but once you kind of get here, it's it's a little bit different. And so the plan of getting familiar with the location with my wife on the trips and then coming back and, and shooting, it can be productive from a photographic standpoint, but it can also be a little challenging because everything I see when I come here kind of reminds me of me and my wife and the trips we went on. And, and then now it's just kind of me on this trip, but it'll take me a little time to kind of get acclimated to it. But Definitely looking forward to see what I can come up with. I know it's going to be a challenge because the weather forecast over the next probably four or five days is it's going to be raining every single day. Uh, so we'll see how that works out. But whew, that was a long drive, but uh, I know this is going to be a challenge and so I'm going to head back to camp and grab myself some dinner. Well, good morning, everyone. So, just had myself a wonderful dehydrated breakfast. And uh, I'm gonna get my gear together, then head out to a trail that my wife and I had hiked last summer. 
and there's an interesting area that I think I might be able to find some sort of composition, but at least I want to kind of give it a shot. And it's supposed to start rain in here pretty soon. Um, no real signs of it yet, other than the fact that it's overcast, but a little rain might be actually kind of nice, but um, fog would actually be pretty ideal, but I don't think there's going to be any of that happening. But yeah, let's get my gear packed up and get out of the way. and hit the trail here and it's such a beautiful area I mean, it's hard to really take in everything and fully comprehend the scale of these trees they are massive and I know that this is gonna be a bit of a challenge for me because I'm so used to working in the southwest where I can differentiate the subjects and make things kind of stand out based on color and based on the light uh, but here a lot of the color is a very similar palette, so um, that's gonna be a little trickier for me to work with. And I think I'll be able to make certain subjects stand out because of, you know, form and lighting, but can't really rely on color in the same way that I do in the Southwest. There's a little bit of rain falling right now. Other than that, it's really quiet, some birds singing. It's gonna be interesting. The rain has picked up a little bit, but it's still not too bad. It's still pretty gentle, especially when you're at the foot of a giant redwood tree where it's kind of uh, shielding you a little bit from the rain. But I uh, got my camera set up here. See the camera back behind me over there. And the scene that I'm photographing, it's kind of this cool area that I found when my wife and I were hiking through here this past summer. And I really like the fact that there's all these trees. It's really dense with trees. Um, but also I'm kind of up on a slope here where kind of looking down slope at all the ferns and it kind of builds a sense of depth, which is pretty nice. And one thing I do when I'm trying to find a composition is I walk around with one eye closed and it allows you to see things in two dimensions. And you have a forest like this that has so much dimension to it. It looks so beautiful, but you close one eye and it loses a lot of the sense of depth. And that kind of shows you how it will turn out in a photograph. And so to try to build some degree of depth here, I do have one tree here in the foreground then off in the distance, there's sort of a, a lighter colored tree back over there. And I'm hoping it kind of takes your eye to the lighter area because that's kind of what happens with a photo. You're kind of drawn to the lighter area. And I don't know if it's gonna work, but, but we'll see. But I did go ahead and expose a sheet of Provia, which is a color slide film, a uh, sheet of uh, color, uh, color negative film, a Kodak Ektar. And I also tried something a little different. I exposed two sheets of color negative film where I did a focus stack. Uh, one focus for the foreground, one focus for the background. I have no clue if that's going to work. It's kind of uh, experimental, I guess you'd say, but depth of field is really tricky back in here uh, in order to try to get the ferns in the foreground all the way out to the uh, trees way off there in the background. But it's so calm and quiet here. I mean, I don't know if this mic is going to pick up the, the sound of the rain right now, but uh, it's so beautiful here. I'm going to get things packed up and See what else we find. Well, it certainly felt good to expose a few sheets of film. It's always kind of a psychological barrier for the first part of the trip, where once I expose some film, I feel like I've actually gotten something done, a little sense of accomplishment.
I have no clue what to expect from that photo. I mean, it's a pretty chaotic scene. Kind of tried to figure out the best solution I could for it. But focus, man, focus is tough. It's kind of dark, dim light in here. And so I had to look really closely at the ground glass using a loop. And uh, hopefully the decisions that I made were pretty decent. It'll be interesting to see if the focus stack shot actually works out. But I did take one more photo of that scene, put my wide angle lens on there, and uh, plan on cropping out the top and the bottom, kind of get to more of a panoramic. So we'll see how that turns out. But it's great to get some film exposed. Still got some more film left in case I find something kind of cool on the way back. But otherwise, I'm planning on heading back to camp, grabbing some lunch, and seeing what else I can find for the rest of the day. This place is so beautiful. When my wife and I visited the Redwoods this past August, we stayed at the exact same campsite that I have on this trip. Each evening after dinner, we had wandered down to the river's edge, then walk across a seasonal footbridge to a beautiful grove of redwood trees on the other side of the river. It was a wonderful way to usher in the evening and spend some quality time among the giant trees. While standing on the bridge and staring out the Emerald Green River, my wife mentioned that it'd be great if we had our own kayaks to get out on the water and enjoy this beautiful place from a different perspective. As luck would have it, roughly a month before heading out on this trip, the great folks at Oru Kayak reached out to me their timing couldn't have been more perfect. Since the seasonal footbridge wasn't yet in place, the kayak allowed me to get out on the water and paddle over to that same redwood grove we'd visit each summer evening. Sure, I could have taken the long route and driven there, but that wouldn't have been as much fun. I love the process of getting out in the water and seeing those towering trees from a different perspective. There aren't too many places where you can paddle along a beautiful river that's lined with old growth redwood trees that tower hundreds of feet into the air. I'm very selective about the companies I choose to work with, but I can honestly say that I'm super excited about this kayak. I look forward to getting one for my wife as well, so we can enjoy getting out on the water on future trips. If you're curious about these lightweight folding kayaks, be sure to check out the show notes for more information, including a promo code to save you some hard-earned money. I shot earlier that day, it turned out all right, but I can't say I'm especially happy with it. Though I made the best decisions I could at the time, I wish there was some fog to help separate the trees and give a sense of depth. It's all part of the learning process, but now I know of a great location for when the conditions truly are special. Thanks so much for watching. I look forward to sharing the rest of my trip.